I'm in charge of when we start recording this podcast. Which was like two seconds, three seconds, four, <laughs> five seconds ago. <laughs> as soon as I said it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, d- don't you know that like the rule is that my eyes are supposed to be closed and I'm not supposed to know when. I was figuring since you're like concentrating, then it would have been fine. Yeah, but I saw your hand <laughs> press the button. That's not my fault. <laughs> Keep your eyes in your lane. But I need to look at other lanes to change lanes. But you're not changing any lanes, you're still in your lane. <laughs> hey guys, I'm RJ. And I am Sid. And welcome back to Couple of Cinephiles. Today is a day I have been waiting for. Oh, since, Sid is so excited. Since we conceptualized this podcast. <laughs> I'm not kidding, it goes way no, back. No, even way before, when we started like hanging, you told me about the fact that we need to watch this movie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But we have differing opinions. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. The, 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 the point is that you had fun while we were watching it. Sure. <laughs> or we not. can call it fun. Or no, not. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad time. Mm-hmm. It was a time. It was a time. Just not what, how you South Africans w- would say. It's, it was a time. No, it's a Tom. <laughs> not a, a time. It's a Tom. Okay. But this was a time. <laughs> it was a Tom. Um... Before we start, there's a few things that I wanted to just touch on very lightly. Um, so the BAFTAs were this weekend. Did you know that? I did, which bec- I, only, I only know that because you told me today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was just reading up on some of the, the awards that were given at the BAFTAs this weekend. And two or three weeks ago, Sid and I went to go watch 1917. Oof. And it blew our minds we were both in foul moods after just because of how intense the film is it's so so good it hits all the right notes and um Mm -hmm. i'm very much a comic book fan and i know that sid is also kind of like but more in the cinematic universes than than the actual comics not dc just saying but you're gonna take that back in half a moment anyway (laughs) (laughs) okay okay fine (laughs) I, i see where this is going yeah yeah so Joker was nominated for a bunch of awards, right? It was nominated for Best Film, it was nominated for, like, a bunch of things. But it won quite a few. Yes. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so one thing that I know that you're going to be happy about that it won was casting. As in Best Actor-wise or, like, Best... Just Best Cast, like, Ensemble. That's a thing? That's a thing. Well, in the BAFTAs, I guess it's a thing. I don't know about the Academy Awards, but, like, it's a thing. Okay. Um, Best Original Score, which... Oh, yeah. 100% agree. Definitely. And then Best Lead Actor. Joaquin Phoenix. Amazing. I would... I would do it to him. That sounds (laughs) strange. (laughs) Not like that. I don't don't mean it like that. I just, like, I really want to be his buddy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I I just want to... Hold his hand. Oh, lucky guy. Lucky, lucky guy. guy. Especially in her. The whole like massage thing that he's got going on. <laughs> I'm just alluding to this because Sid recently got shaved and he kept his massage because I really, I asked him so nicely too. And it's growing on us. It's a look. As it has been growing on me for the last <laughs> <time>. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Anyway, 1917, to circle back to how I started this um, little piece, did so well, did so well. So, so do you remember when we were watching the film, we discussed what awards we would give it? 1917? Yeah. I don't remember. Because you you made a joke and said, if it wins best editing, you're going to cry. Because what editing? Because it was all like yeah, because the film long had f- take. The film had okay. We have we we have we have. This is not the nineteen seventeen review. No, no, it's not. This is we're just discussing we're it. Just discussing it, yeah. <laughs> but th- the film had forty cuts for zero. It's very it, little. Yeah, very little for a two hour film. Yeah, half hour film. I think. Um, I think it was two hours. Yeah, and the the cinematography, like the the cinematographer and the director, made it so easy for the editor, mm. like. Uh, I don't think CGI or anything will really come under editing. It's like its own department. Yeah. Well, you'll be pleased to know that it didn't win best oh, editing. Okay. But what it <laughs> did win was best cinematography. Thank God. <laughs> yes. 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 
Uh, and uh, when we were discussing it, I said that I were nominated for best production design slash set design. Of course. And it won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna round of applause. So if you can hear the claps from your You left. won't be able to hear the claps. <laughs> I mean, they should be able to. No, they can't hear it. Left no. to right. right. <laughs> Never mind. But I gave it a round of applause. A round of applause. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, it won Outstanding British Film, Best Film, Best Director, Best Special Effects, and Best Sound Engineering. It deserves all, all of, of these, those. All of them. I'm so all happy. All of those. I'm so yeah. happy. So that was just a quick look at the BAFTAs. Mm-hmm. Again. <laughs> so. Uh, here is one uh, segment which we haven't discussed so far. Because we were really hoping it wouldn't come up. It, yeah, we were really hoping that we wouldn't ever have to use it. But we're human. And we need corrections sometimes. People make mistakes. Mm-hmm. So welcome to the Corrections Corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened last time, man? What, what, we just couldn't get our facts straight. About what, 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 what we were just so excited. Just too excited to just talk about Zephod's ship. <laughs> that we forgot what it's called many times. Mm-hmm. So Zephod's <laughs> ship is not called the Golden Heart or <laughs> the Heart of the Universe. It's called the Heart of Gold. The Heart of Gold. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that was a big ol' oops on our front. And then just calling back to our first episode, um, I just want to thank a good friend of ours, Michaela, for pointing this out to me the other day. I said adieu is French, which it's old French that was adapted into old English, so technically I'm still sort of correct, but she's also correct in saying that it's a Germanic word. Yeah, I was going to say it. Yeah. yeah, so... From the linguist, a sincere apology. So, Sid, Mm -hmm. what's your favorite film? Predestination. Which is what we're reviewing today. Yeah. Ooh, the excitement is tangible. I could cut through it with a knife. So, just like you have seen Lion King or Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy or Princess Bride like a bunch of times, I've seen Predestination a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. I need a life. You were nearly (laughs) mouthing along with the actors. I need a life. (laughs) Crazy. But listen, before we get into that, Mm -hmm. there's just a few warnings that I would like to give. Mm -hmm. First is a little age restriction warning. This is more of a mature film. We have some sex scenes, some nudity scenes. It's just parental guidance is very strongly advised. Um, And then just a trigger warning. There are some, I guess, ambiguities around trans culture and sexual changes and uh, abuse and things like that that go hand in hand with that as well and alcohol and substance abuse too oh yeah quite and a lot then, of that um, <clears throat> yeah and then and just because it's a newer movie so post 2010 mm-hmm. is where i'm making that cut because mm-hmm. many people haven't obviously seen all the movies that have come out in the last 10 years mm-hmm. we're gonna give it a good old spoiler warning big time spoiler warning because the first half of this film... If, oh, if it drags. It, it drags. Okay, <laughs> Here, here's the thing. Though. The first half of this film is like, if, if you do tell the story to someone else who hasn't seen the film, it's all right. Like, yeah. y- you can kind of use that to intrigue them a- about the film. But the second half, like when it really picks up... It's full of twists and turns, man. Yeah, yeah, and you do not want that spoiled at all. No. As, the, as spe- the part where it's revealed that... It's just a, the part where... Things are revealed. I mean, we, we already gave no, it a spoiler just, warning. Let's just, we can just, let's just, like, can we just build on it? We don't have to throw facts straight off the bat. All I'm saying is the second half of the film hits you like a sock full of coins and it hits you hard. Oh, yeah, it does. I, and I, I cried. Love, did, did you? Out in pain, if you would let me finish. <laughs> Sorry. At, at many of the things that we find out during the movie, I had to just wail in pain because of the agony that this film caused my soul Ugh, but it was well done it was well, i'll give it that mm-hmm. so that's that's that with the the admin side of things and the mm-hmm. more intense side of things so um so i have a question mm. i mean i, I not, not really a question more like a general statement that i kind of i would hope that you would agree with me on okay so you know how like when you watch a movie um and like when, when things are really intense and, you, and you're having popcorn with it, mm-hmm. oh. it's like it's a, it's a big bucket of popcorn. Yeah. Uh, but like when you're really into a film, you like you just keep munching. Yeah. And you don't stop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you're just like so engrossed. Yeah. This if transition you, is taking so long. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> if 
Yeah, yeah. If you had 10 pieces of popcorn, mm-hmm. how many would you end up eating because you're just enjoying the film so much and you just like want to keep eating? Six. So, <gasps> a six out of 10? A six out of 10. What a, okay, is, is, it, is it because you're building up to six or because you're counting down four, like you, you're removing four points? Like what's, what's the issue here? So the film as a whole has too many issues my guy like it's not bad enough for it to be mediocre but it's not Mm. good enough for it to be good like it's somewhere in between they tried really hard and the story was intriguing but the way that it was not portrayed what they did with this intense storyline that they had was not enough interesting all right i felt like all of the important parts of the film were smushed into a 45 minute piece like it, it could have been. It didn't have to be a feature length film. Well, well, in your opinion, what is the important part of the film which you feel like was smushed? So everything from the moment where it's revealed that the barman, I guess, mm-hmm. is a time traveler. Everything from that point onwards is the important part of the film. I get the exposition. I get the story at the beginning. I understand where that's coming from. But that could have been like that. Could have been shorter. Mm-hmm. And the mm-hmm. main part of the story, the actual adventure, the climax of the story could have been stretched out if they really wanted to make it a feature film. But in my honest opinion, this could have been done in a short. Um, thing is, okay, so it, this was based on a short film called All You Zombies. Yeah. Um, a short film or a short story? A short story. Did I say short film? Yeah. Sorry. It was based on a short story called, uh, called All You Zombies, mm-hmm. um, which <coughs> coincidentally... <laughs> Oh, not coincident. It's the name of the episode. <laughs> Very on purpose. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I I do get what you mean because the short story doesn't really delve that much on what happens before the time travel reveal. It's really focused more on the the story. After, yeah, like the there was just a lot of like over explanation. There was a lot of exposition. Hmm. Fair enough. It was like narration. If narration was the story. <laughs> I mean, it is. If narration was a character, it would be the first half <laughs> of the story. Okay, fair enough. Also, just for the record, I, I sound disappointed. I'm not. I'm really not. Cause, cause His I was face <laughs> dropped. Dudes, like, when I gave my score, he went pale. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's, I'm, I'm really not disappointed because, because I have had this discussion with a lot of people about this film. Not everyone likes this film. Uh, as much, especially as much as I do, and I and I get it. It's not for everyone. But it's not. It's not a bad film. Like yeah. I said, it's it's definitely not me- even mediocre. It's it's a good enough film. It's just not a good film. It doesn't deserve a distinction. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, it's like the essay that you wrote two days before the time, instead of taking your time <laughs> and actually doing research on the topic. Yeah, so a six for me. <clears throat> I'm very biased oh yeah 100 (laughs) percent. but tell us about it weirdly enough 100 percent is not the score i would give you can never give a film 100 that's just my opinion you can never give a story 100 Mm percent anyway Uh, i would give this a 9.5 wow (laughs) what about that half kernel i found a continuity error fantastic (laughs) What was it? So in the beginning, uh, this was like in the first act of the film when the barman is pouring a shot for who we later learn the is person, who, who's, the main who's, character, whose name we learn to be is John. Does does, well, that, does that English make sense? No. no? <laughs> okay, so so when the barman is pouring a shot for John, sure. Um, or oh, the unmarried mother. The. Uh, yeah, Confessions of the Unmarried Mother. Or yeah. yeah the un- so the in, I- in IMDb, it's credited as the Unmarried Mother. So Is that so? Yep. Oh, nice. I actually did my research. I just... Couldn't care less. No, I just... But care <laughs> so much. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he pours a shot for the Unmarried Mother. Yeah, so he, he pours a shot, and there's a close-up of the shot glass being filled up, mm-hmm. right? And it reaches like full capacity mm. but but then it cuts to a wider shot and the barman is still pouring and then yeah, he stops see, pouring i feel like if you're gonna be intentional about the close-up then at least have that important enough to keep the same yeah exactly are you sure he wasn't pouring 
another shot? Like no. one for himself? Um, if they did that, then they would have shown two shot glasses. They would have shown him move his bottle to another shot glass. I guess that. The yeah. action. Uh, so, qu- slight deviation. Mm-hmm. Right? As, as a cinematographer, I always tell my director, okay, what's the action? Mm. What you, you've seen me on set. Yeah. I've, I constantly ask, what's the action? Yeah, what's yeah. show action? me what's going to happen. Yeah, so accordingly, if I need to change my shots, if I need to work around my shot list, mm. I can do so, so if I know what the action is, if I know um, where the people are going to be moving, what's going to happen. So that, that way I can frame my shots, Yeah. right? And if, if the cinematographer knew that there's going to be another shot glass, if the editor knew that there's going to be another shot glass, because... They would have made more of a point of it. Yeah, and it, w- it would be in the script as well, and yeah. the editor does not edit without the script. Yeah, of course. Um, so just a slight technical deviation, but... It's not a deviation, it's 100% on topic. All right, fair enough. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind then. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, 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 it most definitely cannot be another shot glass. It can't, it, it, it was just an editing mistake, I would say. Because it, it, it could easily... Would you say that as an editing mistake? Definitely. Or just like Definitely an editing mistake. Is it not maybe part of the, the art department of the production team? No. No? Because okay. the, art, the, the art department and the production team just did their job of having the props there. It's the oh, actor's right, job to right. use it. Yeah, and, and the, the editor's, editor's job, job to, to make sure that the continuity stays yes. accurate. Yeah. Fine. I'm learning so much from you, man. This has been an adventurous time already, and um, we're like not even 20 minutes in. Mm-hmm. I'm very Next. glad you're. I'm very glad you're. You're learning as as uh, as have I in the last co- uh, last two episodes. Yeah, it's a good time. Awesome. Would you mind if I? It's too early for that. That that was not a segue. It was just <laughs> a genuine high five moment for us. <laughs> Um, would you mind if I delve a little deeper into why I'm not super stoked for this film? Yes, I would mind. I'm kidding. Yeah, go on. I'm of course not. This is the whole. That's the whole point. We, we're that's doing this. That's crazy. Right? I didn't think you were serious at all. Um, <laughs> so I just I noted some things down here while going through my initial notes, and there was some language usage that I didn't really see eye to eye with, but I, I did mention that as well. Um, they they throw some slurs around. They're a little lax. And for me, that's a problem. Okay, so it's it's set in various time periods, but mm-hmm. for the most part, 70s, 80s. So I can understand that the language usage that they would use then isn't necessarily what we use now, but this film was produced and put out into public in the early teens mm-hmm. to mid-teens. Yeah. yeah, it's not that long ago. So surely you would have been a little bit more mindful about offensive terms you know what i mean or at least just made a warning or or address that in some way shape or form because they just sprinkle it in there it's not like it's on purpose they could have very much avoided using some of the words that they did Mm -hmm. use Mm -hmm. i have some thoughts tell me about it actually can you do me a favor and just look up the age restriction on this film um predestination Mm -hmm. it's r r yeah okay that makes sense Mm -hmm. so so i have a I, I agree with you to some extent, mm-hmm. right? Um, Fight me. <laughs> I plan on... F-Y-T-E me. F-Y-T, okay. Uh, I, for, for me, it's more F-I-T-E, but that, that's, a, that's a point for a different time. <laughs> but, um, now, you, you, you made a good point, right? Which was, it, it, may, not, it may not have been tastefully done, mm. but, okay, I'll, I'll give you that. But if, if we're really looking at the realism behind... Or, or as realistic as they could make it for you know the, the time period that this movie was set in, um, using that sort of language, I I feel like it would have been used way more than they did in the film, mm-hmm. right? Um, and they were they were just being accurate with the terminology that people would use in that time, mm. I guess. Um, it may, maybe they shouldn't have just played it off as a joke. Yeah, I'll I'll give you that as well. But uh, for I'll just use this film Django Unchained. For example, mm-hmm. right? I mean that that this movie came out in 2012, but there's a lot of strong language used in that. Yeah, film and as well. slurs and just mm-hmm. degrading language in general. Yeah, and used by white people, mm-hmm. not just the black people in that film. So you're such a brown boy. <laughs> <laughs> used by white people. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's mm-hmm. a fair point. So, so um, and uh, mo- movies kind of have to keep things realistic and mm. no, and not just 
play it safe for the sake of playing it safe. Yeah, and I get that. I think I was just being sensitive because it really it hit me with a ton of bricks because before that point there was no like discrimination, I guess. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden it was like, hey, this is set in the seventies. So I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't mean to invalidate your point at all. No, no, I don't feel <laughs> invalid. <laughs> okay, that's very good. And and for anyone listening as well, if we if don't mean to invalidate your opinions. Yeah. Uh, we we are just discussing movies for what they are, mm-hmm. and they do not reflect our personal opinions. Not at all. Yeah. Anyway, on a very similar but yet a little different note, um, another issue that I had with the film is just how they kind of blur many moral lines so okay the film in general is so blurry and everything is gray there are no black and white areas at all so because it's it's the story of one person falling in love with themselves creating (laughs) themselves going back in time to put themselves in the position where they were like it's it's confusing as heck and i can't think that it would be ethical in any way shape or form but that got to me like I felt uneasy Mm -hmm. because of some of the themes that it was carrying because I mean I asked a very important question while we were watching the film being if you sleep with yourself where does that leave you morally like what Mm -hmm. is that Mm -hmm. because that's that's in essence well not in essence that's what happens in the film and I'm not I don't feel comfortable, you know, but that's just, that's my personal bias Mm -hmm. holding me back from enjoying the film for what it is. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like I need to bring that up in order to justify my less than high rating Mm -hmm. is that it just didn't sit well with me as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, the thing is, I I think that that can really be answered if we look at it from a very, from a story perspective. Yeah, plot wise, it makes sense. (laughs) Right. I, I feel like one of the most pivotal characters is not pivot. <laughs> pivot. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like one of the most pivotal characters is not who we think. It's not the barman. It's not the unmarried mother. It's not Jane. It's or John. Or John. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, not either one of that one person. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the audience is so confused. Right? If you I haven't mean, seen the film, if you've seen if you it, haven't then, seen the film, please watch this film. It, it's it's. It changes your perspective on film in general. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's not a bad film at all. It's a good film. It's just I don't mm-hmm. feel comfortable with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Um, but 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 the the, uh, the most pivotal character is Mr. Robertson. Oh, I could go on for days about Mr. Robertson. Of course you could. And and for the record, Noah Taylor, if you're listening to this, I mean you're probably not, but if you are, mm-hmm. hi. <laughs> That is all. And um, Mr. Mr. Taylor, I have a lot of respect for you to the point where I shaved my facial hair <laughs> off to, to match your look in predestination. Um, and I am so grateful. <laughs> so grateful. <laughs> so as I was saying, so he is the, he, I feel like he is the most pivotal character because he, in this film, I picked up, in this rewatch of mine, I guess, <laughs> I picked up something that I hadn't picked up in my countless other rewatches before, mm. which was, I feel like Mr. Robertson was behind everything, I- including the fact that maybe he knew who the Fizzle Bomber is. I even made a note of it in my notebook. Then this is the, the, la- the last note I made before I stopped, which was, does Robertson know who the bomber is? And I feel like, yeah, he does. Um, the, if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you think about it, right, Mr. Robertson w- was very focused on having an agent outside uh, the agency having an agent whatever work. agency that is it's very vague and yeah. th- but they work for oh, the government we work for the government everybody works for the <laughs> government <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't matter knowing which agency it is just mm. that they're an agency and they deal with time travel agents and so they they have time traveling agents and mm. they stop crime before it happens <clears throat> um, yeah that's about as much explanation as we get yeah and that's all we need mm. right Plot-wise? So, Plot-wise, yeah. Um, and so Mr. Robertson, Robertson was, was very... English! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Robertson was really emphasizing a lot on having an agent outside the agency. And yeah. um, when the barman, Ethan Hawke, uh, John, mm. right? Mm. <laughs> when, when the barman... Version 3. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> when, when version three <laughs> <laughs> finds uh, the the piece of the timer and he shows it to Robertson and Robertson gives him the, gives him, you know, the notes about like when they found the lead and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like he wanted he wanted uh, mm-hmm. version three to find out who version four is, which is the bomber. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He, he wanted him to find out. He wanted that. He wanted him to become him. Because everything just continues on the cycle, mm, and it, it is all inevitable. One hundred percent. So here's my question to to your point, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. First, let me just say, Robertson is the only person outside of John slash Jane slash the barman slash the unmarried mother who knows of their storyline. Yes. Who knows of their character arc? Yes. Right. Is he also on loop? No, he just he just knows the past, present, and future. Why? Because he's he's the um, he is in charge of the agency. Like he's the. Do you know that he's in charge of the agency, or do you? Because I think he's been put in charge of Jane slash John. Mm-hmm. Like as you feel that? okay, because apparent it's very apparent that this character, this group of. Mm-hmm. character if i can put it like that is very important for the the world to continue as it's supposed to continue mm-hmm. for things to happen as they're supposed to happen because butterfly effect because ripples right mm-hmm. my thinking is not necessarily that he is also on loop but that there have been multiple agents in the past however long or just in his timeline that he is the only one at point zero of john's life that is keeping track of all of the movements ensuring that everything happens the way that it needs to happen when it mm-hmm. needs to happen mm-hmm. i don't think that he's in charge of the agency because we meet him when jane is a girl mm-hmm. the first time mm-hmm. then again when she's a woman then when she's pregnant mm-hmm. then when she's john right then when she's john point two <laughs> Than when she's the fizzle bomber. Like, that's the only times we see him is when Jane slash John is at the most important parts of their life. I see. Think about it. Noah Taylor looks exactly the same throughout. Exactly. So he is point zero. He he pretty much could have visited all of these points in a day, in his time, Mm -hmm. and just gotten it. Exactly. Um, That's what I'm saying. You make a f- you make a fair point. However, if you if you think back to when the barman is at the hospital and he's about to kidnap his baby self, mm-hmm. um, he is confronted by uh, Mr. Robertson, mm-hmm. and and he, he he tells Mr. Robertson, "I'll accept the punishment. I'll do like, it's fine." And, and Mr. Robertson is confronting him for making an illegal time jump. Mm. Right? He can only do so, I guess, if he was in charge. Or, or do you think he, he was just in charge of That illegal him? time jump was necessary. Yeah. So it technically wasn't illegal. It's From I- the illegal perspective of John, it's illegal because he's not really allowed to do that. But if he didn't do that, then he as a baby wouldn't have ended up where he as a baby ended up. So from Mr. Robertson's perspective, he knows that it's not illegal, but he, have, he has to tell John that it is so that he knows what he's doing, so that he finds the fizzle bomber, so that he confronts himself. Mm-hmm. Like, he's making these decisions and saying the things that he's saying to spur on the plot. Mm-hmm. So I don't... That's where I disagree well, with so you. No, but, but here's the thing, though. The, ma- the main point was that Mr. Robertson is the pivotal character. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's where we started. <laughs> Ten minutes ago, <laughs> it, it, it's it's crazy to think that we didn't think about all these points about Mr. Robertson's actions while we were watching the film. But now discussing it, yeah. it's so important. <laughs> can we move on though? Yes, we've got we, so yeah, many segments a, to, car- that's a, that's to, a, that's a, to yeah, cover. Let's do it. So, um, I didn't really pay much attention to the score of this movie mm-hmm. because um, I was too busy being frustrated at the plot <laughs> of this movie. I don't blame you. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot, a lot. But mm-hmm. I know that you've seen it a million times. So how about mm-hmm. you tell me? Because I am all ears about the score of this film. That was brilliant. Thank you. That was brilliant. Now, the soundtrack of this film is... It's very subtle. It's not in your face. It's, it's, it's not really a soundtrack. It's a score. Like, it's ambient music. There's yeah. no, like... The, I think... Yeah, sorry. That, that, that's actually a good way to put it. Go on. 
the only song that really stands out to me, which was a joke song, I'm very <laughs> proud of that, is um, a song called My Own Grandpa. Mm -hmm. And the line that we, that <laughs> Sid noticed first was that it starts with, it may sound a little funny or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the, the joke in, in the use of that song is that mm -hmm. John sings about himself to himself, but his past self that... I am my own grandpa, which <laughs> technically he is because he is also himself, his father, his mother, his grandmother, his grandfather, his great-grandmother, his great-grandfather. He is and himself. <laughs> um, now, um, it may sound like a joke. So that, that particular line really comes in when he's telling Jane. John. No, John. John point one. Yeah. yeah. John, po John point one. Um, so by now, we know his name is John. Yeah. He's telling John, uh, come with me. I'll show you. And you can talk to Mr. Robertson. And then... Is at really that at that point when the music starts and like it may sound like a joke. Yeah. And then as they're going downstairs to where they first time travel, he's just singing. He's just continuing singing the song. I'm my own grandpa. Yeah. And it's it's I and it's done <laughs> so well. The amount of like foreshadowing that you don't oh, realize so is foreshadowing is intense in this film. Like so they really much. that's something that they nailed. I, 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 whenever I could pick up on certain things, which I hadn't before as well, mm -hmm. I just made a note of just lines that yeah, is just foreshadowing. Yeah, a bunch There's of so lines. so much. Uh, but to bring it back to the soundtrack, so one of the most, uh, where, where the soundtrack really picks up is by the end, but when it's, everything has been revealed, everything is out on the table, it's just mm. there for the audience to process it. Mm. And it's just a, -na 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 <laughs> just, just a simple, these three notes? Four? Yeah, four notes, yeah. Um, just on repeat, just on loop, and it's... Huh, on loop. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and it's just... It, 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 by, by now, the audience's heart's, heart's racing, and we just, we're just processing things, and the music helps to build anticipation to the credits. Yeah, to nothingness. <laughs> to nothing. And, it's just, by, and then, by then, the audience is just sitting there like, what the heck just happened? Yeah, that was my, I think my words exactly were, what, what, mm -hmm. said what? <laughs> um, and uh, I wasn't originally going to talk about the score or the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. I was actually just going to talk about J Cuts, which I, I told you about after we finished watching the film. Yeah, yeah. So J Cuts are very important in terms of audio and editing. Mm -hmm. right? And I feel like this is the best Time to talk about it. Yeah, it's the perfect time to talk about it. So I'm old. Yes. <laughs> Great. So when you're <laughs> when you're editing between scenes or between shots or, be, or just between two separate cuts, mm. um, wh so video and audio you can cut in three different ways. So and there's L cuts, J cuts, and just a regular cut, right? L cut is when the audio ex fr from one cut it extends to the next cut. Mm -hmm. and it extends over the video of the next cut, mm. right? And in the video edit timeline, it makes an L. So you would hear what they would have been saying in the previous cut, but in this current cut. Yeah, it could, it, it could be from one cut in the same scene. It could be a cut into a different scene mm. to transition into a different scene, Yeah, yeah. right? It, um, and it could also just... And, th and the same could be done in the opposite way where the audio from the next scene comes in like in a second or two scene. in the previous scene or the previous cut mm. into the next scene and the, and so in the video timeline it looks like a j yeah and just that's just a simple simple way to remember what an l cut and a j cut is mm. and just Didn't a simple way to understand transitions in audio they did they did use them a lot mm -hmm. and very effectively mm -hmm. um i think especially because everything is kind of on this gray platform mm -hmm. nothing is really super defined it, it does help tie all of the different things together when pushed into one setting i guess yeah so j just one little thing that i want that i want to talk about in the edit i mean it, it's there in the script and that's why the edit is made accordingly but i'm, I'm talking about the edit and it, 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 it helps to emphasize the the line the dialogue and the story so this is when, when Jane is talking to Mr. Robertson and this is at, when they're at Space Corp. Mm -hmm. And uh, she says, the girls here don't like me. And he just responds, they'll come around. And immediately the next cut is her being punched in the face by one of the girls. Yeah, very well done. Yeah, just, just something I found really funny in the moment as well. Mm -hmm. And um, just genius editing. 
So and so because of all of these um, edit points that I've been talking about, J cuts being used effectively, the editor making these genius decisions, this is why he would be my MVP. Just making it all about yourself, huh? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Is there <laughs> anything else you'd like to elaborate on on why you picked the editor? I feel like I've made my points. Mm, that was a nice little merge of categories. Thank you. You're welcome. My MVP. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I think we all know by now who my MVP wait, is. Wait, wait, wait. B- before you go, I have one question for you. Tell me. Who's your MVP? <laughs> I didn't get to ask. My MVP. <laughs> My MVP, <laughs> and I'm quite sure. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, f- okay, so because I have to look at this film from a psychological slash plot driven perspective, mm-hmm. I have no choice but to look at the characters and how they mm-hmm. are portrayed, right? Mm-hmm. I, and I'm so sorry to say this, but sincerely despise the main character slash characters. I think they're terrible people. Agreed. Person. <laughs> I think they make questionable decisions, mm-hmm. but it's all for the sake of the plot. Mm-hmm. So I get it. Mm-hmm. I do. From a story perspective, I get it. However, I would hate this person in real life. <laughs> I would. And that leaves me with just about the best thing that could have happened to me on that sweet Thursday? Friday? We Saturday. It took us two days. Three to days. Two, yeah, two two days to watch this film. Because we, <laughs> we skipped a day in the middle. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so three days to watch this film. <clears throat> the best thing that could have happened to me while we were watching this film, <laughs> for the lack of a better word, <laughs> <laughs> is darling sweet Mr. Robinson, Robertson. Mr. Robertson, of course. And while... while just nothing or nothing while noting some things down about him the uh simon and garfunkel song mrs robertson was playing in like loop in my head but i Mm -hmm. subconsciously (laughs) changed it to mr robertson and kept singing here's to you mr robertson (laughs) jesus loves you more than you will know whoa 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 like i couldn't stop because it was that was like my little gleam of hope to (laughs) hold on to while thinking about the trauma that this person slash people have been going through and causing for themselves. Mm-hmm. My literature brain is going insane <laughs> by having to speak of multiple people as a singular. <laughs> like, <laughs> mm. Anyway. I guess it makes it easier when, when you think about the scenes where they're talking to each other yeah. as two separate actors. Yeah. It helps two process. Two separate beings. Yeah. It helps, it helps process. Um, mm what you're watching again. <laughs> yeah. So, Mr. Like, like we said earlier, Mr. Robinson is truly the only secondary character that we really get to know. Like, there, there's the the orphan mother, there's like, there's a bunch of other small time characters, but mm-hmm. we don't really ever get to know them. Mm-hmm. And we kind of get to know Mr. Robinson and just more or less what he's about when it comes to driving the plot. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you said earlier, he's a pivotal character. He's, very necessary for things to happen the way that they happen and i think for that reason on its own he's already qualified for mvp and then i have to just sprinkle my bias in and say that i fell in love with him when i watched and then there were none the mini series based on agatha christie's book right he portrayed the butler character and he did it so well so well so when i saw him i got And I'm sure Sid can attest to my visual excitement upon seeing Noah Taylor. And um, I I really do have to say that that I was paying very close attention to him because of that. Mm -hmm. And that might be driving my opinion. No, no, that's actually entirely fair. I mean, I I am very biased towards this film for my reasons. Mm. And you are very biased to this one for your reasons. Sure. I don't think we can ever be unbiased about Mm. a piece of art regardless of what genre it falls into. Mm-hmm. So, so the reason I'm very biased towards this film is because, um, so, so this film has actually inspired my... Personal project. My, yeah, thank you. It, it has inspired my personal project, which you, which you know everything about, mm-hmm. right? Um, I'm not going to say anything more, just that... Stay <laughs> tuned, y'all. 
Or oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, please do. Please do. We need we need subscribers. But anyways, <laughs> Oof. Um, we uh, th- this film has inspired um, the way I, I look at films, the way I look at how they're shot, how they're edited, how they're uh, scripted, and just plot devices that we can use. Mm. And and a lot of what I, what's happened to me in my personal life, a lot of what's what I've seen in this film, I've pulled into making scripting one of my own movies. Mm-hmm. And um, what what the scene that really gets to me is when young jo- I guess Jane no John um, the the John we know who goes to the bar and meets the barman uh, version John. one yeah yeah V one V one John when he goes back in time and when he bumps into Jane yeah yeah right um, that is in my opinion a very sweet scene right and I have the opposite opinion really yeah. Okay, I'll, we'll get to that in a mm-hmm. second. I'm very, I'm dying to hear about what you, what you want to know. Uh, give me your opinion. Okay, um, it's not really more of an, opi- more of an opinion. It's just me saying that that is my high five. That's your high five. That is my high five. Well, would it strike you to, uh, to hear that that is my anti high five? Backward high five. All right. <laughs> that was uncomfortable. Very. So. <laughs> For many of the same reasons, I think that you enjoyed that scene just because you are a hopeless romantic and mm-hmm. and you do see things, and and I, I it might sound like I'm looking down upon you, so, but you know that I'm not. You do see the world through rose-colored glasses more often than you like to admit. Mm-hmm. So you see you see things differently than I do, whereas I I'm one to scrutinize mm-hmm. everything. Um, but that being said, I looked at the scene from from what it what kind of emotion it like evoked in me and that was my moral low ground in this film was where he meets herself Mm -hmm. falls in love continues to have a very physical relationship and impregnates himself that that entire sequence of happenings makes me physically uncomfortable it makes me itch I understand why it could be seen as sweet, right? Mm -hmm. Because throughout the entire story that they tell in the first half of the film, it's painted as this like, oh, she fell in love and she found the person that truly makes her feel like she's real and Mm -hmm. and makes her feel like she can be happy and she can be like normal girls because she's made to feel the opposite her entire life long. She's found true love. But it's... He knows that it's him. Mm -hmm. He is fully aware Mm -hmm. that it's him. He makes a conscious decision to say the words like he remembers being said. Mm -hmm. He makes those decisions. And version three of John, I guess, um, Ethan Hawke, John, Mm -hmm. explains to him time upon time again, if I put the man that ruined your life in front of you, would you kill him? And he says yes, fine. But throughout that entire sequence, he keeps reminding him, you have a choice, you have a choice, you have a choice. And he makes the decision to have a physical relationship with himself. I feel like, I feel like you just, I I feel like I lost you for a second. I, I 100% agree with what everything you just said. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Definitely. Uh, the decisions that he made, wrong. Questionable. Not wrong. Morally gray. Because it's for, yourself. For, for, the sake of, for the sake of keeping the timeline, for the sake of stopping the fizzle bomber, for the sake of blah, 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 everything happening. But also becoming the fizzle bomber. You see where, where I'm getting but, at? This whole movie is lives, so confusing. Becoming the fizzle bomber to save more lives. I guess. Yeah. Uh, th- th- that to me is genuinely a very gray area. Yeah, like the entire taking plot is a gray area. <laughs> taking fate in your hands and killing people, but to save countless more. Like, but it's yeah, but but the point is, so the reason that why that just one particular scene where he bumps into her, that's it. Not what happens after. Mm-hmm. Just, just that it, initial connection. Yeah, just that, uh, and w- and when we see Ethan Hawke in the distance, watching everything unfold. <laughs> I. You're you're uncomfortable. I'm so l- 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 let me tell you. I'm letting you finish. Let, let me tell you, you why. Finish. Yeah, yeah. Just just so you you know that it's, it's not just because it's a quote unquote sweet moment. Just that 
I can just imagine what is going on in young John's mind. And when he comes to, when he realizes what's happening, but he can't help but fall up. It, it was a very humanizing moment. No? You don't think so? <laughs> See, during the scene, I made a note, mm-hmm. and um, we make a very like blatant decision, and we made this decision when starting this podcast to not swear or cuss mm-hmm. during any of our any of our sessions because um, we like to keep a PG. I mean, I have brothers that are listening to this. We have morals and ethics that go along with just yeah. being clean, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> So please excuse my French when I say that the note that I made and I'm reading it as I wrote it down is Ethan Hawke just watches this fuckery and that is 100% how I feel. He looks at himself make this very questionable decision knowing what's coming after, knowing where he ends up. I get it. I do. I understand that plot wise it's necessary but it, it just doesn't sit well with me. I'm just saying, morally, where where would you have to be in your life for you to look at the scene and go, aww, cute. He falls in love with himself. Yeah, it wasn't a, aww, cute. It was just just trying to imagine what's happening in the character's in, mind. In like their, that, that's yeah. really it. Yeah, no, I, I hear yeah. what you're saying. I just... Mm-hmm. That was but visually uncomfortable. For however, me. however, you you telling us about these these psychological phenomenons, these um, d- just what, what the characters do, which th- th- their decisions being questionable and everything, all very valid points. Thanks, I feel very valid. Um, <coughs> but okay, if we had to speak about high fives, and I actually have a real high five, and um, if you wouldn't mind. Slapping me some skin. Hey. I loved, and I picked it up within the first scene, the fact that this film has or pays homage to film noir. Mm-hmm. It's very yeah. anti-hero based. It's very dark and twisty. It has a femme fatale, but also has an anti-hero within mm-hmm. the same character. I think it's very smart. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely a high five for me. And I also have a second high five. Okay, let's do it. Okay. And we touched on this earlier, but the fact that everything is very intentionally and very well crafted in its foreshadowing Mm -hmm. was just, I have to give credit where it's due. They did a great job. Definitely. I, one of the, one of the lines that really stick out to me was when, was when V1 John is telling the barman, the, the V3 John. Yeah, the V3 John. Every time I looked at myself, I was reminded of the bastard that ruined my life. Mm. I feel like I should say, excuse my French. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. A little bit of a, a um, little bit of an excuse my French. I'm, I'm just quoting. Yeah. Not my words, but mm-hmm. <laughs> um, of course, of course you were reminded of him. It's you. <laughs> um, I just, th- th- there's so much that, the song I'm My Own Grandpa, just lines that the barman says to his younger version, uh, young, yeah. younger self. The, 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 these terms I'm using, they don't make sense, but they make so much sense. I'm confused. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I get where you're coming from. The foreshadowing yeah. in this film was really well crafted. Definitely. If you could have changed anything, what would you have changed? <sighs> if I was the casting director, I feel like I should have changed the casting of Noah Taylor. <laughs> Are you saying that <laughs> to irritate me? Very much so. Very you much so. You slice it. <laughs> um, I've actually given this a lot of thought. Mm-hmm. I genuinely... I see no notes. I, yeah, I genuinely cannot um, think of anything. Like, what I... <clears throat> you know what? That's okay. I, because <laughs> I have obviously given this film a lot of thought. It mm-hmm. has been breaking my brain Mm -hmm. and I can't find anything that I would have changed Mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that I don't see eye to eye with Mm -hmm. but all of them are there for plot purposes yeah 
So I couldn't have changed anything because then the story wouldn't have made any sense. Yeah. I went on this little tangent in my brain about how I would have changed how they fell in love and, and who they were to each other, but then the story wouldn't have been itself. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, it's, I think this is where the butterfly effect comes into play. Yeah. Okay, because this film is not butterfly effect. It's just inevitable. It's a loop, mm. right? It's, it's not like you, you can't go back and change one thing when it's just about you, mm. right? The, the federal agents who go back in time and they stop crime from happening. That's a butterfly effect. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But this but that's film not is not it. That, but that's not what we're focusing on. We're focusing yeah. on just this one person's journey through time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I feel like if we make any change, change, Nothing That's where the happen. butterfly effect would affect the rest yeah, of the story. It's exactly. Like where were they born? Who? Were, then the entire um, film wouldn't be a thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, However, one thing that I would have done, and I and I said this earlier, but I'm this is the correct platform to say it is, I would have kept it a short. I would have made it a short film. Mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm. a lot of unnecessary explanation came in, and a lot of necessary explanation came in as well within the first half of the story, and we mm-hmm. could have just combined that a little better we could have done a chronological we could have we could have really focused on the essence of the story a little bit more and it didn't have to be a feature length Mm -hmm. i feel like this would be slightly different to what i said in in our last episode about too much exposition in Mm. hitchhiker's guide but in this film i liked the exposition Mm. i I remember when i first watched it I, i was the main reason i like it so much in this film is because it it helped me focus on the plot. Yeah. I cuz I often tend to get distracted uh, when I'm watching movies like like focus on certain things and and I just lose track of the plot or I I'm not able to follow because some things are just too complicated. Mm. So I feel like the exposition, the narration in this film was necessary. Was necessary or or if not that. if not necessary just helpful for people like me. I I get that. Yeah. I hear you. Um so I I agree it it is a slow film. It drags um initially initially it does yeah um in, in my first watch I, the, the only thing that really kept me going was just wanting to know just how the universe grows mm. that's it N- not really you wanted the more plot. world building uh, no in, just in my first watch just oh, right, right, just, right, 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 right. just for the sake of curiosity just for the sake of knowing yeah other than that i wasn't that invested in plot just Ooh, they're they're in. They're going to Space Corp. They have all these machines. They have this. They have that. What's going what on? What is it? Yeah, yeah. that's it. But I then, get that. but then when the plot kicked in, I was like, okay, I'm enjoying it. And then mm. I watched it again. I learned that it's all there for a reason. Yeah. Maybe if you were to watch this film again, I would probably have a different opinion every yeah. time. But yeah, for an initial watch, mm-hmm. that's how I feel. Yeah. Um. But but I I feel like this is why, um. I gave this film a, 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 a high score because it very much kept me entertained yeah. in all of my rewatches. I get that. Right? Hmm. Um, uh, that's yeah. also kind of the point of this podcast, right? We don't have to agree on everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just kind of... Uh, that's just something I forgot to mention earlier. That's it. Right, just okay. that I was very entertained. Right. <laughs> that's it. Right. Um, well, entertainment never goes unnoticed. Mm-hmm. And since um, at the beginning of this episode, I did speak about the BAFTAs. Mm-hmm. What awards would you nominate this film for? Right. Like I said in, my, in the previous episode, that it, 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 it's hard to adapt books into movies. Yeah. Right? This, oh, yeah, yeah. It was based on a short story for some... Yeah. The life of me. Anyway. So, so th- this, making this short story, which, by the way, did not include the fizzle bomber. That, there was no fizzle That was bomb. an additional plot line? Yeah, the fizzle bomber was added for the sake of the movie. That... What an intense spider web. Mm-hmm. Crazy. So I feel like having the Spirit Brothers direct uh, these... What are they known for? I. What else are they known for? Could you check? Let me just... Um, so their, their biggest film is Predestination. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess mainly because of the cast. Ethan Hawke and Noah no Taylor. And, and it's a big budget film as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they they don't really work on that many projects mm-hmm. um, as co-directors. Um, they, have a, they, they have short films. They have just... Okay, IMDb doesn't really give that much information, mm. in my opinion, if we're just focusing on Hollywood-wise. Right, right, right. right. Just predestination yeah, but we don't know what else they were working on. Mm-hmm. If it's not credited to them, I mean, they could have been doing shorts or whatever that we just 
don't know about. Yeah, so so they they, they don't they don't really have that much. They're just a couple of films. I I none of these films are the movies that I've heard of before except for Jigsaw. But which I still haven't seen. Yeah. Or seen anything about. <laughs> However, I I would I would nominate this film for best direct direction. Director? Best, di- best director. Terza. So two. There. Yeah. <laughs> director slash S. Yeah. Um, mainly because they were able to make the decision of adding the Fizzle Bomber storyline mm. into it and, and incorporating it well. Very well. <coughs> um, it also kind of gave the film a finality yeah. to see John in his quote-unquote final form mm-hmm. and who he becomes in order for him to become who he becomes. Yeah. I get it. But yeah, yeah I, I agree with you. I, I feel like, I mean, we know that it's that, that Jane, John and barman and john are the same person yeah but the first three quarters of the film are so focused on young john's story arc mm. uh, where the, the barman just kind of becomes a secondary character yeah like he just like helps him he just mm. tells him okay i'm gonna help you it's only until um, the final act that we really get to see where he ends up going yeah and and the fizzle bomber was mentioned in the beginning then it was just like oh fizz- am i the fizzle bomber like it was just played up as jokes yeah but it wasn't really a plot point mm. um but I feel like because they're separate actors, separate characters, they both needed their story arcs. And poor John goes through so much. So much. So in many his very arcs. short lifetime. Yeah. So much. Um, so I agree with you when you say that the Fizzle Bomber gave this film a finality. Um, and also like b- being able to bring this short film to reality and short story to reality, sorry. Um, Hectic. And You're so gung ho <laughs> for my short film re adaptation. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, like best direction. Mm, I get that. Um, if I can make up uh, a category. Of course you can. This is a podcast. <laughs> we can do whatever we want. <laughs> I'm going to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> You're more than welcome to. Um, best Just drives my point. Best time travel film. Right. Because th- there are a lot of time travel films. Let's um, rediscuss just what you just said mm-hmm. in the next five years. Let's take a look back mm-hmm. at what you just said in five years from now. Let's take a look back five years from... Okay, the, too much time. Too <laughs> much time <laughs> I am big time confusion. <laughs> but yeah, best it's pronounced time... Confucius. <laughs> Conf- uh, con- but also he was an Indian. He was, the East, he was East Asian. I'm... No, that no, Indian you're mid Asian. Right, I'm just brown. Let's leave it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I would. Th- those are those are my two categories that I would nominate it for. Yeah, I I've, I realize that, that I usually just do one real and one non-real. <laughs> no, I, I usually do the same or two non-real ones if I can't mm. think of a real one. Mm-hmm. So we know what I would nominate this one for. Mm-hmm. I'm very curious to know about your thoughts. Very curious, he says. Yes. <laughs> right. I have opinions. Okay, so I actually went and I checked what are categories that films are nominated for on the Academy scale, right? What are nominations that they get based on merit, based on performance, based on box office ratings, like this whole thing. Mm-hmm. And while going through the list, again, maybe this is just my biased opinion that has kept many of these nominations from me. And then, when scanning this list, I saw Best Makeup Department. (gasps) I have a fun fact, but I'll let you finish. How gracious. I just got excited. I'm very sorry, but go on. (laughs) (laughs) So, they really changed Sarah? Sarah Snook. Sure. I I have Snooky in my head. (laughs) They really changed Sarah Snook's appearance quite a few times throughout the film. Mm-hmm. I love what they did with her as a as a woman, as a pregnant woman, as a man. Like they they really enhanced many of her features throughout the mm-hmm. course of the film, throughout her slash his story. Mm-hmm. They really did a good job on changing her enough to be a different person. Mm-hmm. And when they made her look like Ethan Hawke, I think I died. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> 
Yeah, so fun fact, this whole film is like, it, there's a lot of CGI because it's just her playing Ethan Hawke. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to like spit out some real facts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, for, for real though, here's a real fact. To, mm. In order to, to look like the dude, yeah. she, every day before they began filming, she spent four and a half hours in getting, makeup? Her, uh, getting her makeup done. That's crazy. Right. Um, I mean, it's not... And then fun. you're not allowed mm. to sweat because then you sweat all of your makeup off. Ooh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's crazy. Us girls have a hard time being pretty for you guys. Dude, if you look at... Okay, dude. Dude, okay. Seriously. Dude, seriously. Shout out to... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Michelle. <laughs> um, Dave Batista, Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, sure. Dude. But... <laughs> There's a difference. I can. There's a difference between FX makeup mm-hmm. and makeup. Mm-hmm. But don't, don't you think that they would? Actually, yeah, you're right. You're There's right. There's a big difference you're between you're FX right. makeup and makeup. Yeah. But and and also Gamora, and again, yeah. there is a difference. No, between I'm I'm F- I'm actually like alluding to your point. Right. That y'all spend time to look pretty for us, and we really appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I didn't spend any time on my makeup today, mm-hmm. but that's only because I, I, I knew that tell. this was. Oh, shut up! <laughs> I knew that this was an audio podcast and not a video podcast. Mm-hmm. So, when I'm in front of a camera, maybe I'll <laughs> spend four and a half hours on my makeup too. Um, if I if I could give it my fake or or my personal nomination, I would award this movie and look. I love film. I love psychological thriller Mm -hmm. beyond all other genres. Mm -hmm. Beyond Disney. (gasps) No. Dang. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. But I would award this film the best WTF (laughs) moment. (laughs) (laughs) What is... What is... Yeah, I have questions. I have never been so... Look, uh, again, it was foreshadowed so well, but until that point, you don't realize the foreshadowing, right? So when she turns around because she bumped into herself slash himself and they had that exchange of the same quote that, that they have been holding on to for so long, my brain just went, huh? Yeah. And that doesn't happen very often. Mm-mm. So <laughs> I would definitely award it my personal favorite WTF moment. Um, okay, so can we take to Twitter, right? All of you listeners, just take to Twitter and just let, let's let's start a cam- uh, a campaign. Sure. To make this a, le- a legit thing. <laughs> thing. Best WTF moment in film. In film. An Academy Award. <laughs> <laughs> and the Academy Award for best what? <laughs> can, can you just imagine like someone saying that on stage? That's crazy. Just for the <laughs> It'd have to be someone like Chrissy Teigen or John Legend though, who would an- announce this <laughs> nomination. Because they've got a like, fun enough repertoire with mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the universe, I guess. <laughs> but in all seriousness, though, tweet us what your favorite WTF moment in film is. Like, mm-hmm. Let's get those suggestions rolling. What do you guys want to talk about? What do you want to see? At Cinephiles. Hello. <laughs> um, can I just say something? Mm-hmm. This is just to go back to Sarah Snook and Snook, Snook, getting her makeup done. Right, right. Um. I, I'm not. Lo- I'm looking at this from a very technical perspective, yeah. right? <clears throat> but if I had to choose a, an MVP, she would be it as an actress, not as a character, as an actress. I see it. <laughs> I do. She really, she really did it all. Mm-hmm. She did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> she did it to him. Mm. All of us is um. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, she, she really is a great actress and, and I have to be honest if I say that I've never heard of her before watching this, mm-hmm. so I have no realm of reference, mm-hmm. but really a stellar job. Mm-hmm. I, I have, I have massive respect for her as, as an actress because she, I, I don't know if she really like pushed her boundaries in terms of like, like physically or mentally or emotionally or anything, mm-hmm. but like just being able to capture emotions and bring them out as a man 
Yeah, it was so good. And there's a line in the film where she's talking to the barman Mm -hmm. about how long it takes to learn how to speak like a man, learn how to act, how to walk, how to urinate like a man. Mm -hmm. I felt that Mm -hmm. because she had to. I mean, maybe not the urination part, but (laughs) the rest. (laughs) She had to learn how to speak like a man and act like a man and walk like a man and feel the things that a man would feel. She had to do that. Mm -hmm. And hats off to you, Sarah, Mm -hmm. if I may call you by your first name. (laughs) I feel like we're there now. (laughs) Now that I've kind of seen you as a dude without (laughs) any clothes on, I guess we're on a first name basis. Mm Mm-hmm. Also, here's here's a very, very stupid segue to an unofficial segment. Tell me about it. I found your cousin. <laughs> but you you referenced it. I didn't. You did. <laughs> Look. Very quick PSA. Yeah. Not all redheads are related. End of PSA. <laughs> Ends podcast. <laughs> oh, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no shout out to our producer. No shout out. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just end. end. Just delete social media. No. <laughs> <laughs> delete social media? <laughs> Crazy. But, okay. But you maniac. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't even, just like the first episode, I didn't notice it. You did. <laughs> Yeah, that, I guess so. That, that, that Who's young, my cousin? Oh, she young, is. Young Hello, Jane. Young because she's a redhead. Yeah. Yeah, I think my exact note was where she's she's a girl and she's talking about how everybody views her as this freak, right? And um, I wrote down, literally, no, you're just a redhead. Oof, I felt that in my non-existent soul. <laughs> Those are my words to myself about being a redhead. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Please. <laughs> Speaking I can, of. I can say that, okay? I can say that. <laughs> um, all right, guys. That was an adventure and a half. Mm-hmm. I think this is the first film that we've watched together, regardless of podcast, that we haven't seen eye to eye on. Yeah. That's yeah. a, it's a new step for us. Mm-hmm. And I'm very glad that um, we both took it in a healthy way. Yeah, but I mean, that's just kind of how we work. That's true. High five. I'm only taking it as a healthy way for the sake of the podcast and for the sake of the future of this podcast, but I really hate you with everything <gasps> in my heart. You're I'm such <laughs> a liar. You're such a liar. Please do get in touch with us if there's anything that you feel like we missed anything that you want to voice your opinion about, Mm -hmm. anything that you want us to watch and talk about, um, yeah, let us know. Yeah, you can always follow us on Instagram and Twitter at cocinephiles. Email us at cocinephiles at gmail.com. And we will always be open to... Any suggestions. Any and all. And Corrections Corner isn't just for us to find our mistakes. You need to point them out, man. Yeah. You're our friend. Yeah. Listen to us, discuss things with us. We're here. Yeah. 100%. 100%. <coughs> we are so affiliated with Double Dose Digital. Thank you very much to my company for letting us use the space to record and edit. And, and thank you to Sid, Sid for taking the time to really go through all of this and to make sure that it is pleasing to hear. And thank you very much to RJ over here for <laughs> taking t- charge of social media so that you guys are all hooked and prepared to watch the film. Watch the film? Wow. No. Re- read the pot. Read the pot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to bother restarting it to listen to the podcast <laughs> to look at our social media posts and make our Instagram, Twitter, everything look so beautiful oh you guys are so welcome mm-hmm. you guys being Sid <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, can I just on. say one thing mm. I'm very excited that I had some input in this week's the, the title card <laughs> yeah it worked out really well and we yeah. also had a slight change in our logo mm-hmm. which Sid did a great job on. I, I really like what you did with it. I spent like 30 minutes on Photoshop on that for some reason. <laughs> it, it took me a while. And to you like still didn't make it PNG. It's fun. I did. Yeah. In terms of social media as well, if, if there's anything that you guys suggest that we do 
mm-hmm. shout out more often or, mm. or do whatever, let us know. We are literally open to any opinions. Have a blessed day, week, month, year. God bless America. Sayonara.